Mm-hmm. Well, let's kick it over to the other side, Shay. Let's go to uh, Columbia, where uh, obviously not as clean of a victory as you would have wanted against Central Michigan at home last week, just a 10-point mm-hmm. win. But, you know, as cliche as it is, what do they? all these coaches say? They make the greatest stride on the second week of the season. Uh, you know, this will obviously be the first road game of the season for Missouri. It's expected to be a sellout crowd from what I understand there. Uh, in Lexington, so they're going to have their hands full in this matchup. But uh, mm-hmm. I would anticipate most people are going to be picking Kentucky, probably just based mm-hmm. on the fact that this one is at Kentucky, if, if nothing else, because uh, this looks on paper to be such an even matchup. But uh, how much does Missouri stand to gain here, Shane, where you know if they pull off – I don't even want to call it an upset, but just you know get the win on the road, and uh, then all of a sudden their schedule – this, this is the toughest game they have on the early part of the season, and, and you really can build some momentum here with a, with a win on the road, don't you think? Yeah, I think this one's big. I think it's, I think it's bigger for Mizzou because, like you said, the rest of their schedule here the next few weeks, they can really make a run at it and, and wouldn't be surprised if they're a top 25 team here in the next week or two. Yeah, I, That's just where I think they're on the cusp of being. So I, I – it's – one thing that you did bring up is talking about the the spread and who you know who they favor and everything like that. It, this one's a tough one, Mike. I always like to make my lock of the weeks early in the week before the spread really starts changing. And and I'm looking at this game, and I'm going to tell you right now, Mike, my hundred dollars is getting nowhere near it. <laughs> and the fan bases are probably really happy about that. But I just I'm telling you, man, you talk about a damn coin toss. And and what's awesome about this is both fans expect to win. So it, that means whoever loses this game is going to be extra upset because they never saw it coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this uh, definitely could be the makings of a magical season here <laughs> for whoever wins. And and you mentioned the fans being on cloud nine. I cannot wait to see uh, what level they go to Saturday night if you know whichever <laughs> side wins it. But uh, let's kick it over to uh, Eli Drickwich Shade on uh, the Kentucky offense. He's obviously. Very impressed with what they got cooking down there in Lexington on uh, the importance of this game in the SEC East standings. And, uh, you know, he get, gives a lot of praise here to Mark Stoops and everything he's built. And I would imagine, you know, it's a little bit of a blueprint of uh, what he's trying to accomplish there in Columbia. I know it's one game, but how different was the offense you saw out of Kentucky than, than what you saw last year when they kind of had the reputation of, of they had 560 yards, I think, and 420 of them through the air. I think last year they had 35 total plays, maybe, you know, and maybe 35 through the air. So, totally different style, totally different feel, um, executed at a high level. Uh, shifts, motions, formation, yeah, vertical shots, uh, intermediate uh, middle field throws, quick game, got the whole. The only thing that's a surprise to me is how quickly they've gotten it to where they're at. You know, sometimes when you come in as a new offensive coordinator that makes such a drastic change, it's kind of hard to get it in that quickly. But, I mean, they're they're humming on all cylinders right now. And, and uh, obviously it helps when you add some great players like they've been able to add. You know, every game is important, obviously. But Kentucky and Missouri, whoever won this game has always finished higher than the other one. Just That makes sense. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, Relative to this division, where your programs are, just how big is this game? They're all big. I mean, they're all big. Um, you know, I, obviously last year was a big game for us uh, because we hadn't beaten them in five years. And I think getting that uh, off of our chest was good. I, I think it's um, – I mean, Coach Stoops has been there for ten years. Ten years. Recruited at a really high level and developed his players. Um, so to try to make a comparison, us and them right now, I think is a little bit soon. I think we got to control who we are. We got to do what we need to do, go on the road. Um, I mean, I don't think anybody's season ends after week two, regardless of how it plays out. I think it's a big test for us, uh, on who we want to be and how we want to perform and what, what we want to do on the road, which we didn't play particularly well last year on the road i think we had one road win so i think for us it's more about a test to see how much we've grown and developed i don't look at it as this is a a, a, 
whether where Kentucky's program versus Missouri's program is. Uh, I think that's making it probably a little bit too big. Um, I think it's a big test for us on the road uh, to play in front of an SEC crowd early in the season. And we're going to find out all kinds of issues that we got to get fixed. We're going to find out how much improvement we made from week one. When, when you talk about Mark Stoops, though, yeah. what do you really respect about maybe the way he goes about his business, his coaching style? And things like that? Well, I think he had a plan, um, and he's executed his plan since he's been there, which it started with recruiting. Uh, there was an article the other day about how well he's done recruiting the state of Kentucky, which, um, you know, obviously I think starts first. And then he's he's – expanded that and recruited more of a, a, a Midwest team instead of always going down. He's identified areas that can help them. He does a great job in Florida, but he also recruits uh, Detroit really well, Michigan really well, uh, some of the Big Ten areas. Um, and so he's he knows who he is and who he's recruiting. And then you look at his team in, in the way they have developed players. I mean, five drafted players last year. Um, they're always fundamentally sound. They don't beat themselves. They're in a lot of football games. Um, he's got a great record in one-score games. Um, you know where you, that to me is when you, as a coach, really got a coach, right? It's one-score football games, and, and uh, he does a really nice job in those. And and so you can tell he's got an overall sense of how the game's going to play out in offense, defense, and special teams. I think he's made bold moves, you know, obviously last year changing the offense and looking at what that's been. Uh, you know, he started out spread wide open when he was there and then uh, after Neil left, kind of raked it back down in, controlled the clock, played great defense, kept himself in games. Won 10 games, I think, a couple years ago, was playing in late November to win the East. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, second longest tenured coach in the SEC. Uh, that's hard to do, man. I mean, it's about two years, and we get shipped out of here. So he's done a heck of a job. All right, Chad. So, I, you know, one thing, and we know Drinkowitz is such a uh, clever guy. It seems to me that uh, whenever one of these coaches, you know, just goes on and on to praise the other one, <laughs> yeah. maybe it's just me, but it's, I almost feel like in the back of their mind they know they got him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think we saw that. I'm not saying that's exactly how it's going to play out this year, but uh, they got him last year. Drinkowitz did, and and maybe he's got something cooked up to where he thinks he he's got an edge in this matchup again. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think he. I think that's what I'm thinking is the vanilla the vanilla playbook that they used last week that they got away. Like they, I mean, they almost got caught, man. They almost got caught with their pants down, but they got through there and they didn't have to show too much. They just you know, they got to lean on the running game and, and, and pulled away with the victory. So, yeah, I, I can see that, man. I When you hear these coaches talk like that, you think of Saban and talking about, you know, UT Chattanooga or something, <laughs> talking about <laughs> how how great the fan base is and blah, 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 when, when you know, it just feels like they got to say something like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you know Eli Drinkwitz – and, and Let's let me get this started. Okay, it's Drinkwitz, right? I I've always said Drinkwitz, but it's Drinkwitz, right? Yeah, it's it's a struggle for me not to say that a. I, I, I want to <laughs> include it, so. But I'm gonna tell you, man. If you've watched Drinkwitz, like I, I know this personality, and you know there's the there's the press conference, Eli, and I guarantee there's a total opposite. It's like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. I guarantee when he's in the locker room, man, he's letting these boys know that Kentucky doesn't deserve to breathe the air that they're in, you know? So <laughs> that's the kind of attitude that they're going to have coming in here. They're not overlooking the Wildcats by no means, but I guarantee you Eli is letting the boys know how important and crucial this game is, and they don't deserve to have a four-point spread by no means. <laughs> 